Hello, super sentence stackers, and welcome to the classroom. My name is Mrs. Considine, and I am your English writing teacher. I'm a specialist in teaching writing, and I'm here to help you with all of your language choices. Now, there has been some splendid sentence selectors already this week and I'm looking out for all those people who love language and love weaving words together in such a wonderful way. We have got a fabulous film today. It is tinged with magic, delight and humour and our film today is called Presto. If you look in the description below, you'll see a link to the film Presto. I don't want you to watch it yet. I want you to spend some time with me here in the classroom because I'm going to teach you how to write today. And every day I focus on three writing challenges. The writing challenges always come from the writing rainbow. Many of you have the writing rainbow in school and this is a collection of all the things we need to do in our writing. We need to think about our ideas, the fantastics. We need to think about our grammar, the grammaristics. And then we can also include writerly techniques that explode off the page. And these are called the boomtastics. Every day, Mrs C is going to give you three writing challenges to include and it's really important that you listen to that part because I want you to choose a chunk and then deploy the three writing challenges in your work. I'm going to explain now how it's going to work today. In a moment when the lesson ends, I'm going to ask you to watch our film Presto. Um, it's a really funny film. It's about a magician and his name is Presto. Uh, I think it's playing on the idea of, hey Presto, um, you know, the, the magical language of uh, magicians. He also has a very cheeky, hungry rabbit. And that rabbit is called Alakazam. His first name, Alec. Um, Alec only wants a carrot. And Presto doesn't give him a carrot. And then I think he conjures up a way to get the magician back. Um, there are lots of high tricks and... Uh, lots of problems that happen and it's a really funny Friday film. I'm wondering if we can get some of that humour and uh, action injected into our writing. Uh, I'll be looking out for that later. So, when this lesson ends, I'm going to ask you to watch Presto. Enjoy it and and take your time. Um, you can watch with other people. You can watch with your cat if you have one or a teddy bear or just by yourself. But take time to watch the whole film. Then I'm going to ask you to choose a chunk, um, a moment in the film because Mrs. Considine has watched it and chunked it up into nine parts. This is because I don't want anybody writing their work for the whole film because it'd be too much. You're just going to write for one chunk and you're going to choose that very deliberately. Hmm, I like that word deliberately. I'm going to hold on to that actually today. Um, when you have chosen your chunk, I need you to write nine sentences that represents that time sequence. And within those nine sentences, I'm going to ask you to include three of our writing challenges today. That's why you've got to look on when Mrs. C starts teaching, 
because those are the bits that I'm going to be looking out for when I make my decisions around the best writing that's going to feature in the nation's story at 3.30. Okay, I'm going to now just um, go through some um, just really important things so that you have a, the best chance to be included in the nation's story. The first thing I need you to be sure of is who the characters are. I've mentioned them casually, but I'm just going to remind you about them now. We have a magician and their name is Presto. And because it is their name, we're always going to use a capital P when we mention Presto. The rabbit, the cheeky, naughty rabbit, we're going to call Alec. Both of these, because they are their names, we'll include them with capital letters. We'll also be using pronouns like he and they. And that is really important that our communal story is a third person narrative so that Mrs. C can sew it all together so it's got really good cohesion. The other thing that's important in this uh, nationwide process is that you include your name, your age, and you must tell me which chunk you are writing for. Today, I am going to do some demonstration writing for chunk three. That is going to be my chosen chunk, but really, I don't mind what chunk you choose as long as you tell me which one you've chosen. Okay, my precious pen pushers, my wonderful word weavers, I really care about words. And now uh, I'm going to introduce you to this new word I discovered yesterday. It is a Greek word, and this word is eunoia. Eunoia is an amazing word that means beautiful thinking. For me, when Mrs. C models how to write, I am trying to show you my beautiful thinking. And that beautiful thinking is the writer's brain. It's not perfect, but most things that are beautiful don't have to be perfect. You'll see me tussle with words, tussle, chuck words away, change them and improve them. And another thing you'll see me do quite a lot of today is thesaurus thinking. This is when I come up with a word quite quickly as a writer, but then I need to check out if it is the best word. And so I go over to my shadeometer and I gather other words in that family and I collect them and um, I choose the best, most precise word for the job. So, under my stewardship, we need to start with a blank piece of paper. All writers start with a blank piece of paper, but I'm going to help you now. I'm going to start by looking at our three writing challenges. Okay, taken from the writing rainbow, what are our focuses for today? Okay, our first writing challenge is, and we've done this before, and this is the important thing about learning, particularly for writing, nothing floats away for too long. We keep coming back to in it, practicing it, getting better and better at it. So we're going to have a go at a simile. Um, and I've got a really clever idea here that I want you to have a go at. We're going to have a go at building a simile with magician themed ideas. So it is going to be a simile, but we're going to think of all the language to do with magicians to get our ideas flowing. So this is going to have a magician themed simile. Oh, that's exciting because um, that is the context of our film today, uh, the magician on stage. 
The second thing we're going to have a go at doing is we've talked a lot about uh, triplication, the power of three, but what I'm going to show you today is how to use uh, the punctuation mark, a colon uh, that looks like this, um, to introduce a list. And after that list, we're going to include um, three adjectives. So three describing words after the colon. I'm going to help you do that. So don't worry. Soon I'm going to show you the sort of thing I mean. And the third writing challenge today is all about um, words to describe the sense of sight and looking. And we're very cleverly going to see if we can, in a sentence, intensify looking. So we're going to group going from low to high intensity. Um, I'm going to help you do that as well. So at the moment, you're just looking in, listening, thinking, I might need some help with that. But don't worry. I'm your writing teacher. And I love teaching writing. So you're in the best place. OK, just a quick recap. We're going to do a magician themed simile. Uh, we're then going to include three powerful adjectives after a colon, a colon introducing our list. The third thing we're going to do is drench our writing in the sense of sight, but just turning it up through the sentence. Um, OK, are you ready? I'm going to show you how to sharpen your writing, make it very engaging and precise. Um, and you're going to see some unoya, some beautiful thinking. <laughs> um, and under my stewardship, I'm going to help you now. OK. Mm. I'm doing chunk three and I'm going to start very quickly, uh, we know that like and simile, uh, sorry, like and as are important words when constructing a simile. Um, and often writers use those in the middle of sentences. I'm going to show you another way to do a simile where you come out fighting uh, straight off on the page with the as, as. Straight in there, starting with that word. Now, I want this idea of um, movement and urgency and quickness as quick as, as quick as. Mm. I'm going to think of other words uh, in my synonym family area, uh, other words I could have instead of quick, but they mean quick, just to see if I can get some different ideas. Okay, I'm just going to put in here this action symbol and um, let me write down quick to get me going. Quick. Another word that means quick, um, I could have brisk. Oh, that's a good word. I like that. And another word that could be in that family could be fast. I've got this little idea where I could really bring some rhythm and rhyme in here. So I could go as quick as a flick. Oh, I like that. I could go as brisk as a risk. Mm. I could go as fast as a blast. Mm. That's quite interesting what I've done there. However, if I'm trying to create a magician themed simile, I've got to think of things in the world of magic um, that are like flicks, like risks, like blasts. Let me have a think. Oh, I know what could flick. A magic wand. Oh, as quick as a flick as a magic wand. Oh, 
Yes, that would be magician themed then. As brisk as a risk. What could be a risk for a magician? I know, a new spell. Mm. That's a, re a new potion. A new spell. Uh, so a new trick I'm going to put there. A new trick. The risk, the brisk risk of a new trick. Um, what could blast? An abracadabra. Oh, I like that. An abracadabra. Oh, there's some good ideas. And then I'd have this idea of it being magician themed. Um, as quick as a flick of a magic wand, as brisk as a risk of a new trick, as fast as a blast of an abracadabra. Mm. I like all of those ideas, but I'm going to choose one of them now as a writer. I might make a few changes. I'm going to go with flick, I think. As quick as a flick. I might think of something else other than... I was thinking like, um, you know, like a, a cloak, like the magician's cloak. As quick as a flick of a magician's cloak belonging to the magician um, comma presto and it's always to to really guarantee your sentence has good construction after a comma it's always handy to put the character's name in um, as quick as a flick of a magician's cloak presto and he suddenly hears that it's a knock. It's like the, the signal to go on stage. Uh, presto heard the knock. I could put signal. Both are good, actually. Heard the knock to go on stage. Full stop. As quick as flick. Good job I'm rereading. As quick as... That needs another... Ah. As quick as a flick of a magician's cloak, presto heard the knock to go on stage. Oh, well done, Mrs. C. I love the way you start straight away and get straight into that simile. Okay, I'm now going to build a sentence that describes what's happening on the stage. Well, presto starts by taking his top hat and showing it to the audience. The adjectives I'm going to use are adjectives to describe the hat so that everybody can see it's got nothing in it. Hmm, that's going to be quite hard to do, describe nothing. Hmm, what a writing challenge. Let's see how I get on. Um, I'm going to start with this word, whilst, so that it gets him straight onto the stage in writing, whilst on stage, comma, he, and then I want this idea of, um, he does it on purpose, he shows the top hat on purpose, and I could probably do that with an adverb like purpose. Lee. I don't know if that's the best word. Purposely. He purposely shows the hat. Mm. Yeah, let's do some thesaurus thinking over here uh, about what could be uh, some of the best words. Let's write down purposely to get us going. Purposely. He purposefully. Oh, I hope I've spelt that right. He, I tell you what else would be in this family, knowingly. Oh, that's a grown-up word. Knowingly. All of these mean the same thing. Knowingly. Purposefully. Deliberately. I know I had to remember that word for a reason earlier. Deliberately. 
Oh, I do love words, especially when I collect them and they have the same meaning, all oh, dramatically. Oh, I love all of these. Um, but I feel attached to deliberately. I've already used it once today. Um, okay. Presto heard the knock to go on stage. Whilst on stage, keeping that movement going, he deliberately... Thank you, adverb, coming in there. He deliberately showed the audience. Oh, we're coming to the list soon. The list of nothingness. I don't know how we're going to do it. He deliberately showed the audience his top hat. His top hat. Watch what Mrs. C does now. She puts in a colon to introduce a list of three adjectives. But I've got to now describe the hat he's showing with kind of nothing in it. Um, I think I'm going to start with looking closely in my mind's eye at that visual. Um, I'm going to start with what it actually looks like inside. It's satin lined. A little hyphenated word there so that the reader can see that that's a unit working together satin lined deep and empty mm. satin lined deep and empty do you know what i think it's this is we can do it either way. I think this would be nice without the and. Very list-like. Satin lined, deep, empty. Oh, really kind of jars there. Oh, the audience knows it's empty, but it's okay. He's a magician. He's just going to pull Alec, the rabbit, out of the hat. Or is he? Because I'm afraid... Our rabbit has been really naughty and he's not playing along with the tricks. Um, what I want to do now is show the part of the film where Presto is clearly getting mad and looking at him to get back into position. So I really need some of these looking words, but I'm talking about this intensity, not just a look. It's a look. It's a stare. It's a glare. You know, he's getting really cross. Um, let's start this sentence off. And I want the reader now just to think about the stare. So I'm going to start with the determiner of the and focus the reader's thinking onto the magician's eyes. The magician's eyes... And that's, I love how you can do that in writing. You can really zoom, zooming in here. This is a little zooming technique. Look really closely. Uh, the magician's eyes, and I'm going to intensify now, looked. Not too bad a look. Next word. Let's turn it up. But it's in the same family. Stared. And then I need a, an even more intense looking word. I'm going to go over to my thesaurus thinking board because um, I'm sure there's more than just glared. Let me see. I'm going to write down glared to get me going. Glared. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, gazed. Mm, not very negative though. I want, I think I like glared because it feels negative. Gazed is a bit positive. Actually, I'm going to reject gaze because of that reason. I mean, it's okay. It's probably not the best though. Uh, gawked. Mm. But look at this one. Scowled. Oh, I'm going to put a tick by scowled and glared because they feel now how frustrated Presto is getting with his naughty rabbit. The magician's eyes looked, stared, 
scowled. Oh, isn't that just perfect for the job? Oh, Mrs C, you're on fire today. Scowled. The magician's eyes looked, stared, scowled mm, at Alec the rabbit. Let's make it obvious what's happening. Alec the rabbit to get in position. <laughs> I like uh, to get in position. What an imposition. Because he's been so naughty. I love the way, you know, little internal rhyme stuff makes your brain stick to other words that could work. Um, let's finish with um, an exclamation. Uh, what a... And this is a play on words, actually. What a smart Alec. Alec, uh, that phrase... Oh, Mrs C... I don't mean a question mark. I mean an exclamation mark because it's an exclamation. What a smart Alec. It's smart Alec means like a little know-it-all, a bit cheeky. Oh, that's just sort of fell into my hands there. What a smart Alec. Exclamation mark. Hmm. Okay. My wonderful super sentence stackers. I'm going to ask you now to watch the film. Watch it all. Enjoy it. It's so funny. And then I want you to choose a chunk. Just one chunk. You can choose one, three, four, five, nine. It doesn't matter. That's your writerly choice. And once you've chosen that chunk, Mrs C is going to ask you to write nine sentences, or as many as you can. And I challenge you today to include a magician-themed simile. I challenge you to include some adjectives introduced after a colon, like a list. And the other thing I ask you to do is think about some words that you can intensify. They could be feeling words. He gets fed up. He gets irate. He gets enraged. You know, that you can show how Presto is losing his temper. Thank you, everybody, for listening. And remember, Mrs C loves reading all of your work. You get it into me on Facebook, on the training space, and you can find me on Twitter at Jane Considine. Hashtag super sentence stackers and remember to include your chunk number. I will then see you after I've read all the work and I've weaved it together and sewn it all up for the nation's story at 3.30 in the reading room. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for being here. And I'll see you next week for our lessons then. Thank you very much.